I tested positive HIV in August of 1985. That was, I was 35 at the time. So I'm now 70, that's half of my life I've been living with HIV. People were dying and I, you know, who's gonna be next? And um, I, I have forgotten how scary that was and how hopeless, helpless and alone we felt. Like in the beginning, I thought, okay, when am I going to die? You know, I, I should, should I start planning for, you know, five years from now? Because a lot of people were doing that. They were just like cashing in and just like going out with a bang and doing stuff like that. And then it got to the point where I stopped worrying about it. You know, I said, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outlive this thing. And now I'm at the point where I'm undetectable. So my viral load is low and... Um, it's not like here, it's not, I, I, I was just telling somebody yesterday, I, I'm not going to die from HIV related illness, I'm going to die from old age stuff. If you would have asked me, could I imagine being strung out on, on meth? Couldn't imagine it. Not in a million years. Substance use became problematic uh, when I was... 58 years old and the substance was methamphetamine and it started out as a way to keep me awake because I was working a graveyard shift job a 13-hour shift and coffee just wasn't cutting it and so it started out as a way to cope with this and I thought I had it under control what makes this drug so insidious that it, it creeps up on you and you think you have it under control. And then one day I came to realize, oh no, it has control over me. Uh, and I knew that because that's when things were falling, out, falling apart. Like I was neglecting my health. <laughs> I was neglecting my, my financial obligations. I was neglecting the care of my dogs. You know, you don't realize it until it smacks you in the face, and by then it's, it might be too late. With meth, what I didn't realize at the time, it was a way to mask unpleasant emotions. Part of my suffering was the aging process. That was the biggest thing. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle aging. I was now, you know, older and my body was falling apart. That was tough to deal with. The other one was um, I spent a lot, lot of my life sort of trying to fit in, trying to please people, looking for validation. In, in doing that, I sort of become like a chameleon. And then after so many years, I become sort of like, who am I? What do I stand for? What are my values? And when you have that, boy, that's an opening for anything to happen. So somebody says, here, try this. Oh, sure. You know, so what happened is now I'm chasing this euphoria, which is not the same as happiness or pleasure, right? And so that, that led me to problems, serious problems. I was on this path of self-destruction, and I knew it, and I didn't care. I, I stopped taking my, my antivirals. And even though I was told, you can't miss a dose, right? I think I went like six months off my meds, off my antidepressants. You know, depression creeps in, and that's debilitating. And, you know, I, I, I once said to my counselor, I said, well, you know, to be honest with you, methamphetamine is like the best antidepressant I ever had. The problem is when it wears off. So my path to recovery started with the Stonewall Project. And you know, when I first started Stonewall, I, right off the bat I said, I'm not interested in abstinence because I like this too much. And so I said, all right, let's talk about Managing your use so you're not harming yourself. And that's when I first heard about this term called 
harm reduction. I thought, what is this? Now, abstinence is just another tool in the harm reduction toolbox. It isn't something opposite. It's just another thing. You could choose to do that. And I eventually got to the point where I says, okay, I'm going to try for abstinence. Now, you could do a full abstinence where you, you avoid using all substances, or you have targeted abstinence, which is what I chose to do. I, it's the methamphetamine that's the serious problem. I still smoke weed every once in a while. I still like a glass of wine every once in a while. So, but the harm reduction, it was a stepping stone for me to get to abstinence. The biggest driver in my recovery was the support groups. Just this kind of camaraderie with other people going through this, and you know, I benefited so much from that. I mean, it's a community, and, I, and one of the things we talk about is connection is the best antidote to using. Because when I was using, it was all about isolating, withdrawing, and I couldn't care less about other people. I didn't care about myself either, to tell you the truth. And so I'm thriving now because I'm part of a community where I feel accepted, I feel like I belong, I feel like I have something to say, I have something to offer, and I also get something in return. So it's this back and forth, and that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a life-sustaining and affirming thing, you know? So it's like the most important thing to me now. If I had not gone through substance use and gone through recovery, would I have come to the, this kind of self-actualization? I don't know. I like to refer it as a renaissance or a renewal. Um, part of the renaissance is, is striving to be authentic. And that means being honest. And the first person I had to learn to be honest with was myself. I had to stop lying to myself and thinking, that, oh, I've, this is great, this is not a problem. You know, it's like, whoa, it is a problem, dude. <laughs> you ended up in jail twice. You're going to lose your home. So I had to admit to that. And, and then I had to start to get in touch with my core values. I had lost sight of that when I was using. Accepting my, my ethnicity, my racial background, my sexuality, uh, all these things. That was a pathway to become like a whole person again, which I don't think I ever had. I, I never really experienced this kind of wholeness all, through most of my life because there was some element of shame and guilt that I hadn't reconciled with. And now it's like, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. And I think people are much more accepting uh, of a person that is honest and authentic. So the most rewarding thing that came out of the whole recovery process or the renaissance is um, I found my voice. I now have a sense of purpose. Um, and it's helped me deal with the aging process. I now embrace it, like all the other aspects of my life. But the most rewarding thing is I've developed some really good friendships you know, out of this whole experience. Other guys who have been on the same journey, some guys are still struggling, but we support each other. And, you know, I, I have some real deep personal uh, dialogue with these guys, which I didn't have before. I mean, part of the thing with the, in that using community, it's everybody is like so dishonest. Everybody is just like... Yet we lie, we cheat, we steal, all that stuff. Just nothing about it is genuine. Now I have some real genuine relationships, which is something that I was always wishing I had. But I, I realized I have the power to make that happen. And that is just so rewarding. <laughs>